Welcome to Puerto Portales in Mallorca, where we have got an opportunity to not just have a look round a really special yacht, but actually take it out for a sea trial. So behind me here is the Pearl 95. Now, for those of you who don't know much about Pearl, it's a British brand with British designers behind it, but it's actually built in China, which enables them to do a really good job at a very attractive price. So this 95 foot super yacht, really, more compact super yacht, starts at just 5.95 million pounds. Now, I know that's a lot of money, but relatively speaking, compared to the competition, it's probably a good million pounds cheaper than some of its better known rivals from the likes of Sunseeker and Princess. But it is a really interesting design. It has been done by Bill Dixon in the UK for the exterior and the naval architecture and the layout with an interior by Kelly Hoppin, a very well-respected interior designer. So let's take a closer look and show you exactly what makes it special. So starting in the cockpit, we can see we've got the controls here for all the platform, for the side wings, lovely stainless steel gate that swings open and locks into position, and then the stern gear itself for, sorry, the mooring gear. You can see big Lumar winch and a nice storage for the tails of the actual rope to store away in there. And of course, a huge cleat and there you can see the controls for the Lumar winch down there. And then this fabulous cockpit space here. So really big C-shaped dinette, very lovely teak table with this inset strip of white and these stainless steel inserts, three freestanding chairs, and then this lovely overhead extension. So this is the flybridge extension that runs all the way back and you can see it's on big stainless steel supports at either side. But what I love about this, are these frosted windows overhead that just di let diffuse light through into the cockpit, but also provide enough shade and shelter to feel really protected here. That's a big bar area serving this table. We've got a sink in there. There's big drawer fridge down there. And then an ice maker on this side. And this I rather like, this is actually the fire cupboard, but just look how nicely done that is. Beautiful stainless steel fascia plate with all the controls on for the engine room, the fire pump, the shutdown system. And of course, a little handheld fire extinguisher as well as a full hose. Very nicely done. And then over on the starboard side, we can see <laughs> there is a third helm area. So when you're coming in, stern to the key, you've got throttles for the main engines and bow and stern thrusters, as well as all the start and stop controls. So everything really to hand, where you can just look exactly over the stern, see how close you are to the key, see how close you are to the boat next door. Very nicely thought out. We'll just do a quick lap of the decks while we're here. Now, something I wanted to point out here are these glass bulwarks. So because you've got those big doors from the saloon and the almost full height windows, it's really nice to be able to look out through those glass bulwarks. Now they did consider putting folding platforms here, but what they actually found was that other than the first couple of times when you use them just for the sheer novelty value, that people really don't use them that much. It's a really expensive option that you know, can go wrong if the electrics go or something, and they just found it was as effective to have a lovely glass viewing bulwark, but not actually have the fold down platforms. Really nice and tall. You can see how the, these are almost shoulder height here, but again, glass underneath, and then steps up to the foredeck area. and a lovely entertaining space up here. You can see there's quite a tall step up here and that's because you've got the windows in the master cabin down there. But fantastic, another dinette up here, which again, when you're moored stern to the quay is really nice to have, or if you're at anchor, it just means you get this fantastic view over the bow. A couple of big sun pads there. And of course, walk through so you can get from one deck to the other very easily. And I'm a big fan of this teak decking. This is actually real teak, but just having the gray cork in there sets it off really nicely. It just makes it all feel a little bit paler. It's very nice and cool underfoot. 
and then the actual crewing area at the front you can see we've got big twin anchor systems we've got stainless steel on this one just got steel on there but you can see in a couple of fair leads either side so we've got the bow lines out here but the anchors are set into the hull there are if we look over the side you'll probably just about catch a sight of one of the anchors under there now the anchor locker itself let's have a quick look in there you can see two huge separate lockers and all the chain in there and then a, an even more private little seating area right at the bow nicely set in so you can see when you're sitting down here you do get a view over the bow but it's even more private even more sheltered because it's slightly recessed and then back down this side pausing to admire these very chunky grab rails you can see that's an oval section and there are three separate layers as well as a wire in there so it does feel very nice and secure and then back down here again another set of doors this side we'll see that from inside in a minute and that is the access down to the engine room which we'll go and have a look at in a minute but first let's go inside and see just how lovely it is here now one of the features we've got here these full electric doors so see if I just press that button the door slides across and they are glass but you see they've got a mirror effect on it so again it just makes it a little bit more private adds a little bit of uh, sunscreening as well so it doesn't heat up quite so much but one touch of the button and it glides effortlessly open and in fact you can have those set on automatic you can see there's an automatic button there and then you've got a motion sensor here so as you approach the door it literally opens in front of your path now this Kelly Hoppen design so Kelly Hoppen very well-known designer interior designer does houses um, but this is the only boat company that I'm aware of that she works for and she does the whole thing and you have a choice of effectively three uh, predetermined uh, offerings um, there's this is the luxury one there's also a taupe one which is slightly more earthy tones and then there is a studio which is kind of in between the two but uh, yeah this is the luxury one which is a slightly more sort of higher contrast a little bit more modern a little bit more edgy but really beautiful design so I'm just going to close this here so that we can admire just how quiet and calm and cool it is in here see an absolutely massive TV on this side and one of the nice things is that absolutely everything is taken care of so all these fixtures and fittings they're all Kelly Hoppen designed they all come from her studio and lots of storage up here got some extra glasses in there more jugs there everywhere you look there is plenty of storage cocktail mixers but it's just the overall look and feel of it it's really smart really classy see this dark mahogany wood high gloss finish all done by hand stainless steel inserts and a lovely wrap of seating very comfortable and a stylish coffee table here it's kind of two ovals joined together almost like a piece of sculpture but looks fantastic and then this dining area here more sort of formal dining area you've got eight seats around here gloss white surface and I like this too this strip along the main saloon that almost divides the kind of corridor feel from the seating area over to port and the dining area but it just leads you through adds a bit of visual interest and you can see there's dark oak flooring they've even run the planks in a different direction to help separate it now here are these huge doors so one of these is standard uh, the other is an option so you can choose to have both or just the one if you're happy with it but they are controlled here see if we can trigger it there is an electronic seal so if you can just hear those are quietly the seal is slowly being released and once that opens up so that's just to make sure they're absolutely watertight and weather tight and you can just see a little gap starting to appear here and once they're there you can then lift that and they slide open manually so just let's 
lovely bit of fresh air into the boat and again you've got exactly the same the other side but now you can admire those glass bulwarks from inside obviously we're in a marina here so we're only looking out onto a boat but you can see the view that you get forward from that now another thing I wanted to show you here in the dining area look at these so beautiful gloss finish again and inside every one of them there is another soft closed drawer where everything is stowed absolutely beautiful so all of those beautifully set in there and there is another one there let's close this one up first and if you look even over here there is another one which if we open up you can see all the little coffee cups and so on so lots of storage very classily done and then again those are the controls for the other door so we're going to go on round starboard side first yep there, more storage and coming forward first of all we come to the day heads so again really useful feature it means you don't have to head downstairs there's a lovely day heads there means when you've got guests on board during the day they don't have to intrude on anybody's cabin space and now this is really the star of the show in my opinion because this is the owner's cabin and it is the main deck owner's cabin let me just close up you see there is a huge storage area there it's just worth having a little look at just the size of that again really handy to have somewhere to store cushions suitcases that kind of thing and then over on the port side this is another fantastic feature it's a full walk-in wardrobe I'm just gonna see if I can find you see you've got lights in here you've got full storage all your towels and blankets lots of cupboards drawers and that all slides away shut you can shut that off so I'm just going to turn those lights off Again, look at the grain on that really beautifully done high gloss grain running this way along here and vertically here just admire this cabin this is absolutely astonishing for a 95 foot boat I don't think owners cabins get any better than this so there's another desk area here that we mentioned here we've got full controls for all the systems on here for the television for the blinds for the music and a second desk area again so you can have the full his and hers desks television in there comes up out of the bulkhead touch of a button again more storage over to this side again all these vases all part of the offering so you don't have to think about how you're going to fit it out it can all be done for you and then a lovely little breakfast or champagne area here two freestanding chairs very comfortable and this vast bed and again look at the finish on this so this whole bed base is one single piece of mahogany that has been carefully shaped all the way around there actually you can see that there is a join there but it looks like a single beautiful piece of softly curved rounded slight angle on it and again all of these have pull out drawers so it doesn't just look beautiful it is all in fact very practical too and then round into the ensuite bathroom and when I say bathroom I'm really not kidding because although you've got a, sh a full walk-in shower over on this side if I swing the camera slowly round you can see there is in fact a proper bath there so you can sit in your bath bubbles up to your neck looking out the window the beautiful view beyond and again we've got eye level windows up here too fabulously big sink and lots of lovely white marble there are a number of advantages in having a main deck owner's cabin now the first is that you've clearly got fantastic views you've got a little bit of extra height so these windows alongside me here you get a great view out there and of course those amazing windows at the front of the cabin but the other is that you're 
completely removed from all the main sources of engine noise. So the engines themselves are obviously completely at the other end of the yacht. You've got an entire 60 odd feet of boat between you and the engines itself. And also being on the main deck rather than the lower deck, you're removed from the other source of noise, which is the water on the hull. So normally when you're in a VIP cabin on the lower deck forward, you get a bit of noise from the chines. But here we are now, I'm sitting at the little owner's desk and there is almost no engine noise at all, even though we're cruising along. If you look out the window, we're cruising along probably at 15, 16 knots at planing speed. And there is absolutely no engine noise at all, just a very slight hum. And equally, there is very little water noise. So I can just hear a tiny little ripple of water curling off the chines. But other than that, it is completely quiet. So you can happily cruise at speed, even at planing speeds, and have a perfectly normal conversation. You could even be asleep in here if you want to make a passage at night time. You could absolutely do that without the engine noise or the noise of the water disturbing you. Really interesting little point that I hadn't appreciated until I'd actually been underway in a boat like this. And let's now go down to the guest area. So you can see there is a door out to the side deck here. Just makes it quicker if you're getting out to the foredeck for crew or indeed guests. And then staircase down to the lower deck. And again, look at the detail here. You see that is all beautifully carved. So there's a little ridged feeling to that. Adds a bit of texture, a bit of detail. And then into the lobby area down here. And again, there's another big full height wall unit, all fully accessorized, all in those white tones contrasting with the high gloss woodwork. And here's another little detail I wanted to show you. Look down here. That is a vacuum socket. So rather than having to carry around a handheld vacuum clonking around from cabin to cabin and putting that gorgeous woodwork at threat, there is a fully integrated vacuum system. So you literally just plug in the vacuum wherever you are and you can clean it all up. So we're now facing the stern and you can see again this lobby area runs around here. There's another wall unit there. Of course they all have storage in two. Now there is an option to have these combined as a single big full beam double VIP cabin. But the alternative is to have two separate doubles. And particularly if it's a charter boat, as this one is in fact, that makes a lot of sense because it's not as if these are particularly small cabins. There's a full size king, king size bed, plenty of floor space all around it, big hull window. You can't really make the most of that when you're in a marina, but you can see very nicely done and fantastic. Look, all that gloss mahogany again. Again, little vanity area there, plenty of storage everywhere you look, not just at eye level, but again, at floor level too. And indeed, a hanging wardrobe all lights up automatically. And of course, an ensuite bathroom. Again, all the same details, all the same quality and finish. And even little things like that. You see that door stop down there, just to make sure that it absorbs the shock and holds it on a magnet. And again, that is almost identically matched with the other one. So this is on the starboard side. Again, big hull window, big king size bed, exactly the same mirror effect. We've got the wardrobe there, bathroom there. And again, these lovely curved underlit beds, all with drawers underneath the storage, big TV. And then moving forward, there are the two twins. So again, if you have those as one single big double VIP, you've still got these two twin cabins. And although they are set up as twins, you can see that these beds are on rails, so they can both slide together and be made into a double. So really good versatile use. You can have that as a twin set up as it is now, or slide the two together and make it a double. Again, big hanging locker, safe in every cabin for your precious bits and pieces, jewelry, watches. Again, big walk-in shower, all to the same style. 
nice to have opening hatches even down here and exactly the same mirrored over on the starboard side another twin cabin and they're quite generous width these beds they've got to be probably three feet across so when they're slid together you do get a full size six foot bed and even here you can see this lovely inset woodwork artwork all sorted for you it really is a one-stop shop and again another ensuite bathroom exactly the same mirrored effect so now let's head up so this is what they call a raised pilot house so although it is above the level of the main deck it is fully enclosed and it is a proper purpose-built bridge deck area so there is a small sofa around it if guests want to join in or crew want to sit alongside and this is rather clever it's a little sliding table I'm not going to slide it too much because I can see that they're charging the radios but you can see that that slides along and means you can have that as a little drinks table or put your accessories on and here is the main helm station and what a helm station it is we've got no less than six glass bridge screens here you've got three across the top here and three set into the dash and I'm told that this is absolutely the very latest you can have and it adds up to more than six figures it's over a hundred thousand pounds worth of navigation equipment but what a setup it means you can have you can see you've got cameras all around the boat so you can keep an eye on guests you can see how close you are to the key obviously you can have it set up as a chart plotter you have the radar you can see there's all different controls I'm not sure if this is really going to show up but you can put it on sonar we haven't got sonar available at the moment but you can go in you can have all the systems you can check the state of your tanks have your radar and then you've got throttles themselves bow and stern thrusters and the main MTU engine controls and those are all doubled up on this side too and finally we've got another repeat of all that here which I don't know it looks like it might be flashing a little bit on the screen but again you've got all the boat systems so now we're on shore power but you can check out the domestic batteries you've got the generator batteries or we can go on to the engine controls you can see exactly the fuel state uh, you can check out all the pumps and bilges you've got all the different areas sea readiness now that's a really useful feature so on a big boat like this with lots of bits that move like garage doors bathing platforms you always want to be able to check just at a glance that they're all safe and secure and ready to go to sea so really nice system and it's nice having that slightly separate from the helm so that uh, one of your crew members can check those if somebody else is actually helming and what I do like is that even though you've got all this glass bridge here you've still got a proper chart area here with a little perspex cover on it lots of storage for all your bits and bobs all the screen covers and even over here you can see on a sprung hinge so you have all your manuals everything kept together and again more storage up here and then you are out onto the flybridge itself and this is where you are going to be spending most of your time so even though you've got that main bridge deck literally just down there there is still a full outside helm up on the flybridge so you can very much join in be part of the action uh, have your skipper up here or if you're an owner operator it's lovely to be able to helm from up here too and again we've got everything repeated up here we've only got six screens uh, sorry we've only got the three screens here as opposed to the six down below but because you've got all these other little screens you've got full control of absolutely everything you've got the MTU you've got these side power stabilizers throttles themselves I really like these MTU throttles I don't know if you can see but they're actually hollow through there it's just a cool little feature drinks holders still got the proper manual compass stern thrusters the Humphrey automatic trim and proper switches for things like the sunroof all the bilge pumps anchor lights horn all the things that you need to get to quickly without having to make your way through a load of menus so big forward-facing screen that helps keep some of the wind off 
Although to be honest, underway there does there is still a little bit of a gap that the wind comes through. And then this huge, huge hard top with a massive sunroof opening. So this is you can see is just a fabric sunroof. But because it's fabric, you just get this absolutely massive opening. So the whole thing opens up. And then there is of course the entertaining area itself. So the big bar here serving all your guests here. We've got a large draw fridge there. Oops, sorry, let me just close it up properly. Got an ice maker down there, sink under there, and even a barbecue grill there. So really well equipped to serve your guests and lots of storage and more glasses and so on under there. Close that up. And then the main entertaining space. So big dinette, again with that same style, unfinished teak table with the inset white and stainless steel strip. Lovely sort of checkerboard textile finish to the seats, a couple of movable stools. And then this lovely sort of more relaxed coffee style area over to port just means you can have several different groups of people up here without feeling like you're all on top of each other. And then of course you've got to have a big hot tub and that is a particularly impressive one. So teak top to it, teak steps up to it and right next door to a pair of sun beds and you can see there is a big storage area under there and then freestanding sun beds here. And what I like about this are the glass transoms. So really nice to be able to lie back on the sunbed on one of these freestanding ones, looking out through the glass transom. So you've got a lovely view of your wake behind you or the bay that you're anchored in. And here you can see that's the frosted glass that lets the light filter through down to the cockpit below. Twin life rafts stowed exactly where they should be aft on the flybridge. So very easy to deploy those. And then staircase back down into the cockpit. And this is a nice touch too. Rather than just a straight steep step of set of stairs, there's a lovely little curve to that. And it's a really nice shallow angle. So it's very easy to walk down. They're really wide, really shallow. Just makes it very easy to move up and down. I promised I would show you the engine room, so let's go and take a peek at that now. And it's quite a steep ladder down here. I'm just going to spin around and make my way down here. So, here we go. This is where the big stuff happens. So we've got two MTU V16 M96 engines of 2,400 horsepower each. And you can see that they're actually tilted slightly forward. And the reason for that is that it's on V-drive shafts. So the shafts come out the forward end and then reverse back down towards the stern. And that's because it enables you to mount the engines that much further back to free up more space forward for accommodation. So fantastically nice and light down here. There is a second ladder that comes down through the cockpit. So if you want to just dive down from the cockpit, you can do that. And then very nicely lit. You can see there's full standing headroom. I mean, there's got to be over seven foot of headroom in here. Huge exhaust systems either side. Very nicely lit. We've got a couple of big calorifiers here providing the hot water for the boat. And then moving further aft, you can see we've got twin generators. We've got a 40 kVA cola over there and a 35 kVA one there. We've got the fuel filters for each engine, again with a switch over handle so you can check one while running off the other. And then if we move further down, this is where it gets a little bit tighter. You can see I'm crouched down in here, but you can get all the way back. So you can see there is a fresh water maker there. And then there is a wash and go system down there that just takes out any kind of chalkiness of deposit so when you're washing down the boat you don't leave little watermarks everywhere 
and you can see the hydraulics on that wall there which are all for the garage and the folding wings got cooling fans shoreline supply and then if we come back up here you can see this is the main hydraulic system so we've got hydraulic bow and stern thrusters as well as fin stabilizers so there is a power takeoff from the main engines that can power this or indeed the generators can power it so when you're underway it'll come off the main engines when you're at anchor you just run the generator and that will keep everything going but very well equipped you've got loads of battery boxes down here you've got separate engine start batteries and the domestic batteries as well as those generators and then steps down into the crew area so crew area unusually is forward on this boat and that's because you've got that main deck owner's cabin up above and that means there's room for the crew quarters down here so very nice little crew mess area here still very smart actually still got that lovely gloss mahogany finish but it means there is somewhere for the crew to hang out they're not just confined to their cabins got nice little drinks area here just knock have a quick peek in here so you've got one crew cabin here ensuite bathroom and then we've got a shared bathroom on the starboard side and two more cabins forward a bunk cabin on this side let's just see if I can pop a light on there we go have a proper look and a matching one on this side too so just means you've got four crew beds here you've got that shared bathroom and then obviously the ensuite captain's cabin how quick is that they just were straight down so look at this this is what it's all about got the entire garage open we've got the starboard side down and then the port side down too and now you've got a fantastic beach club area with both sets of terraces down beach club open clearly when you're at anchor you'll launch the jet ski the sea bobs and then you've got this entire beach club area and you can see that under here we've got we've got fuel for the tender there and there's bars and everything it's all a bit busy at the moment but that then becomes an entire entertaining area you've got fridges you can see there's chargers for the sea bob set up there you've got these huge speakers set into the side of it so you've got an entire entertainment space and of course this whole platform sits down and those steps open up and become a lovely teak stairway into the sea really is quite a feature I've come up here to the flybridge helm to just give a little bit of a description of what it's actually like to drive we have done all the figures down below in the raised pilot house the formal bridge but it's lovely to be able to sit up on the flybridge and actually be part of the whole social scene up here as well as actually enjoy the weather it's not quite as sunny as it usually is in Mallorca but it's still much nicer to be out in the open air on a boat like this so what have we got in front of us steering wheel the helm itself extremely light it's got about seven turns lock to lock but there's almost no feedback at all it's not like uh, you know a car or a small sports boat or something it's very much almost like an arcade game it's that light very nice and sensitive we've got the throttle controls for the twin 2400 horsepower MTU engines and then complete set of screens readouts for absolutely everything you can set these up exactly how you want it you've got the three Garmin screens you can obviously you can have radar on one you can have chart on another or you've got cameras all over the boat so you can keep an eye on everything that's going on elsewhere on board we've got the two Lumar anchor controls so it's got twin anchors uh, here we've got the rudder angle set up we've got a Garmin heading autopilot we have bow and stern thrusters side power thrusters 
We've got Humphrey auto trim, so this will actually take complete control when you rev the engines up, throttle them up. That will maintain a level running attitude, keeps it nice and flat so the bow doesn't climb too high, and then will automatically bring it back a little bit as it climbs onto the plane, and it will also counteract any side wind. We've got side power stabilizers, I've got the controls for those here. They're the curved fin stabilizers, so underway as well as at anchor, that will keep the boat nice and steady and we'll demonstrate that in a minute when we actually do a turn, but we've got a very slow roll coming in and it completely keeps that under control. So let's throttle up a little bit. We're already in slow ahead, 550 RPM. And to be honest, it's so quiet, you would barely know the engines are running up here. But now if we bring the speed up a little bit to say 1500 RPM, and just let that settle. So at 1500 RPM, we've already taken a set of figures and at that speed, you're doing about 13 and a half knots and burning about 286 liters of fuel per hour. But that's a very nice, comfortable cruising speed. If you knock it back into displacement mode, about 1000 RPM, you're doing nine and a half knots and using around 88 liters an hour. So you can see there's quite a difference between displacement and now where we're in kind of semi-displacement. And then if we really want to bring the power up a bit, the turbos tend to kick in on these engines around about 2000 RPM. But if we just bring that up, we're now at 1800. There you can feel the turbos kick in, a really noticeable little boost at that point. And now suddenly it's up onto the plane. We're running at a comfortable, 20, 21 knots. Flat out should be doing around about 26, 27 knots. In this instance, we've got a little bit of growth on the hulls and propellers, so we maxed out at 24.6 knots, at which point we were doing 2,350 RPM and burning around 928 litres of fuel per hour. But what I wanted to demonstrate is just how comfortable it is at this speed. So other than a little bit of wind coming over the top, it's incredibly civilized. You know, the engines are nice and hushed, incredibly smooth. I think as much as the actual quietness of the engine, it's just how smooth they are. But all I can really hear now is the wind noise. But also I wanted to show you that it is really quite agile. So just have a quick check around. There's nothing there. So let's put on full lock. And even though we're at full lock and doing over 20 knots, there's very little lean at all because those stabilizers and the Humphrey trim tabs are keeping it all nicely controlled. It's just a little bit of lean, which is what you want really, because it just provides a little bit of balance so it doesn't feel like you're being pushed out with the G-Force. But we're very quickly going round. We'll see if we can complete the circle and maybe go over our own wash to create a little bit of waves, a little bit of a challenge for the hull, because there's really not much out here at all other than a very gentle swell. But you can see we're completing the turn in around about three boat lengths, which is pretty good going for a 95 footer. And here comes our own weight, just straighten it up and power through that. And there's absolutely not a hint of a slam. It just pushes through a little bit of a bounce just to let you know it's going through it. But other than that, completely controlled. Try the other way, you can see it really is one finger steering, it's that light. And here we go again in the other direction. We're still doing 19 knots. But on a boat like this, speed is almost irrelevant. You don't really feel that kind of speed and it's certainly not going to trouble your guests. It's nice to have it if you want to get somewhere in a hurry or escape the weather. But to be honest, on a boat like this, it's really about enjoying the journey as much as the performance itself. So we straighten up, we can see we've got the rudder indicator there. Oh, I knocked it back. But you've got another rudder, ind rudder indicator down there. You can see we're level up. And let's just take it all the way up to full speed. Just for a brief moment. Now we're 2,300. It, it should rev to about 2,400 RPM, these engines. But like I said, there's a little bit of weak on the hull, just slowing it down a bit. But we're up to 24 and a half knots and burning 930-ish litres an hour. Very comfortable. I'm just going to ease it back again. 
nice and gently. And now we're back at displacement speed. The wind has dropped off and it really was just the wind noise then. It's, it's, it's not the engine noise at all. It's incredibly smooth and quiet up here. But you can just imagine dawdling along now, eight, nine knots, full displacement mode. This speed, we're only burning just under, well, around about 80 litres an hour in total, covering nine knots very comfortably. But that feels like a really solid, competent hull. It's not a sports boat, you don't want it to be. You just want something that's relaxed, comfortable, and above all, refined. And I have to say, given that we're outside in particular, it really does feel refined. But that is a full tour of the Pearl 95. And I mentioned right at the start of this that one of the appeals is the pricing of it, but it's also the fact that it comes with a full five-year warranty. So absolutely anything that goes wrong on the boat in the first five years as a private owner is taken care of. If it's a commercial charter, uh, then I think they reduce that to four years, but still it's really reassuring to know that the whole boat is covered by a warranty, absolutely everything, the systems, the engines, everything. So that is a full tour of the Pearl 95 designed in Britain by Bill Dixon, interior by Kelly Hoppin, and all beautifully built. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tour. If you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell icon so that you're notified whenever we post a new video. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.